Well, hold on one. There we go. Good morning. Good to see you guys here this morning. Um, if you don't mind, if you could please grab a yellow card, fill it out for the attendance. Let me take a step back here. Take a, fill it out for the attendance. Um, that way we know that you're here this morning. Also, a couple quick announcements. Uh, John Sims uh, grabbed me, got a hold of me. There is dates for Guatemala, April 10th through the 19th. If you are interested in going to Guatemala, please see John Sims. I'm sure he'll be up here after church, um, so you can probably find him around this area. Also, this Wednesday night is Common Ground. Uh, we won't have normal um, small group times, but meet back here for some good food. Um, I'm sure it's probably going to be at 6 o'clock, and it's probably going to be chicken, I'm going to guess, right? I've got the thumbs up, so it's going to be chicken. So it's going to be a good night. Um, bring a um, casserole dish, right? Is that what? Bring a side, two side dishes or a side dish and a dessert. Um, also, you may see on your way out at the Welcome Center the bottles of blessing. Uh, if you wouldn't mind to grab one, keep it in your, in your cup holder in your car, throw your change in it, keep it by your bed, throw change in it. Um, Haven Care Center and Pregnancy Resource Center will be collecting those uh, for unpl unplanned pregnancies um, in Mercer, Boyle, Garrett, and Lincoln. So if you don't mind, just grab one on your way out. Fill it. Those are such a blessing to families um, in need. And also, this Friday night, the, tri there's the Triumphant Quartet is going to be in concert here, uh, January 30th at 7 p.m. It's a free concert, so come out, hang out. They're a very good group. You won't, you won't be disappointed. You'll be blessed uh, to hear them sing. Um, we're on for tonight. Youth group will be at 6.30, and then evening Bible study will be at 7. And now I'm going to hand it over to Greg for the uh, baby dedication. Before we do that, I think there's a video that goes with that. January is the month that we set aside. Can you see me back? And uh, <laughs> is the month that we set aside for the sanctity of human life. And I know that's one of the things that this church believes strongly in, that every life is worth something because we were created in the image of God. And uh, so I want to show you a quick video that's kind of um, what the, the Crisis Pregnancy Center is about and what this month is about as well, if you've got that. Do you have that? <laughs> Tell you what, while they're getting it ready, let me go ahead and do the names um, here first. And then, is this your phone? Okay, let me do the names here first, and uh, those that have pre-registered to be a part of the baby dedication today, when we call your names, if you'll come up, and uh, Jacob's got uh, just a token of our appreciation, but we do want to have a time where all the, two times a year, we invite those that have had new uh, births in their family to come and be included in a prayer of dedication as we dedicate these children to the Lord and pledge to, to raise them in the ways of the Lord, and so I want to invite them to come at this time. Lily Grace Selby, born April 13th, 2013. <clears throat> they here today? Come on up. And Layton Lucas, born September 24th, 2011. They here today? On their way, all right. Hopefully they'll get here in the next two minutes. Uh, uh, Aniston Burton, uh, born October 23rd, 2014. On their way, okay. Um, if there's anyone else that might not have signed up in advance, but if you've had a child that you'd like to have included in this prayer of dedication and you'd just like to, to mark this day, we want to invite you to come as well. If you had a, a birth in the last year, anyone else? All right. Well, if not, then uh, would you all join me for a word of prayer today? All right, put it on pause there a minute. This is just awkward. Tell me something I don't know. Okay. All right. Good. I have no witty response. Let's just pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are the author of life. And Lord, we thank you for this precious life. And we thank you for uh, the parents, Lord, that come today wanting to dedicate this child to you. Uh, we know that, that this child is a gift. And so, Father, we thank you just so much for her health. And, and we pray for these young parents, Lord, that they will 
not only provide every physical need for this child, Lord, but that you will bless them with your Holy Spirit so that they can raise this precious child to be your child, Lord, and will be a part of your eternal kingdom. Just be with them through the days ahead. Give them wisdom, Lord, to instill godly knowledge and biblical values in this precious child so that uh, when she uh, is of age that she will call out to Jesus Christ to be her Lord and Savior and be a part of your eternal kingdom. We thank you, Lord, and we just uh, thank you as the giver of all good things, especially life itself. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How about one more hand for our new family? Thank you all. All right, now the video as to what sanctity of life's about. something I don't know. I see no other way. No choice. We made a mistake. And this mistake is too big. There's this place. I gotta go. This bridge has always been the way out of town. And now it's the only way out. It's better this child is never born. Every day, women in our community and across the country are faced with a life and death decision for their unborn babies. Most feel like they really don't have a choice at all. At our local center, we're giving women the real hope and help they need. Call us today to find out how you can be a part of this effective, exciting ministry by praying, giving, and serving. In God's plan, no life is a mistake and the life you help to save will be a wonderful life. All right, so if you or someone that you know uh, ever is in need of that ministry, we want you to know about the Haven Care Center. I'm going to ask if the worship team would join me today. And uh, I'm going to ask if you're able, would you stand with us today as we open our time of worship uh, together this morning. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is that of heaven. And uh, may we be remindful today that this earth is not all that we were created for, that we have a home that's really where we were created for and where we belong. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside. Sometimes it feels like I'm breathing. But am I alive? I won't keep searching for answers that aren't here to find. All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I So when the walls come falling down on me and when I'm lost 
lost in the current of a raging sea, I have this blessed assurance holding me. All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. When the earth shakes, I want to be found. This is not where I belong And all I know is I'm not home yet This is not where I belong So take this world, just give me Jesus This is not where I belong Where I of praise today in his house there's a better place where we truly were created for where we belong i'm gonna give you a few minutes before you're seated to greet those around you let's look for new faces make sure everybody knows how welcome they are this morning All right, if you would just remain standing as we sing this next one. I believe there's power in the name of Jesus. Y'all believe that? And uh, whether you're at a low point in your life and you call out for Jesus, when we pray in the name of Jesus, things happen. There's authority in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And there's salvation in the name of Jesus. Let's sing about his, his blessed name today. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Cause your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name sing it louder cause nothing has the power to save but your name Jesus in your name we pray come and fill our hearts today Lord give us strength to live for you and glorify your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder, because nothing has the power to save. But your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name. Nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to save. Oh, let the nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to save. Yes, let the nation sing it louder, cause 
Cause nothing has the power to save but your name. How about one more hand of praise today in his house for the name of Jesus? Amen. You may be seated. You know, the most important person here today uh, is the person of the Holy Spirit of God. And we want to make sure that we are keenly aware of, of His presence here today. Without the Holy Spirit, this is just a fine gathering of some good-looking people and a few ugly ones. But uh, just kidding, you all look great. But without the Holy Spirit, guys, we're just playing church. We're, we just have religion. But when the Holy Spirit is here in our lives, everything changes. When the Holy Spirit is in our church, everything's possible. Uh, when the Holy Spirit is alive in our community, there's hope in, in every situation. So we want to be keenly aware of His presence here today and ask that He moves in all things and, and blesses us today uh, as we seek to be a blessing to Him as well. This next song just makes us mindful. Let's sing it together. Heavenly Father, we do indeed welcome your spirit here among us. It's your spirit that gives life and uh, brings the salvation, salvation message to life. And Father, I pray that that message is heard loud and clear here in this place today. I pray that hearts are ministered to in a way that only you can. I pray that you give out peace to those that are desperately needing it today. I pray that you will encourage and inspire those that maybe that have grown lukewarm, Father. There are, are needs in this room, Father, that they just feel there's no one that can help them. And I pray that in a way that only the Holy Spirit of God can, that you will just assure them that there is no need too great, no mountain too high, that your spirit cannot move in their lives and in their situation. Father, some of us perhaps need to, to come today and respond to the call of your spirit for salvation. And I pray, Lord, that that happens today, definitely, in this place. Father, now as we prepare for a time of communion, let's, let's examine our hearts as you call us to your table, Lord, to re receive these emblems of your body and your blood. We just pray, Lord, that in response to what you've done for us on Calvary, that we'll search our hearts, Lord, and if there's anything in our, in our hearts that we need to confess, that we'll give it to you so that we can truly worship you today, God, and be washed clean. Just see us as a repentant people, not perfect, but repentant, desiring to please you in all areas of our life. And I pray that we'll do that in these next few moments so that our worship is genuine and sincere. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is our time of communion today. We invite all baptized believers to celebrate with us what we have uh, 
to celebrate today through Christ. Just take the bread and the cup as they're passed. Hold them. Use that as a time of prayer just to confess your sins and express your repentant heart to him. When the men return to the table, they'll lead us in partaking of the emblems together. Join us in prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace that permits us to meet in your house, in this city, in this state, and in the world. We thank you that we can meet before an unbelieving world and show what we stand for. We ask that you be with those today who are in nursing homes and hospitals and keep your healing hand on them and do your will in their life we pray that we can look within our soul and within our heart and find those sins which are inhibiting us to go and do what you will of that we do be with us as we go through life and lead us in thy will we ask in the name of Jesus Amen
And on the evening before his crucifixion, Jesus was meeting with his disciples in the upper room, taking the Passover meal. And he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he said, take eat, this is my body. He then took the cup and offered it to them saying, drink, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this time we can come together and worship in your house. Be with those who are sick and suffering, Lord. Be with those who have lost family members this week. Just bless this gift as well as the giver. For all these things we ask in your precious heavenly name. Amen.
Thank you for that, and that goes uh, perfectly with, uh, with the message today. As we're talking about, there's no place uh, like home. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to John chapter 14, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 6 today. And, uh, of course, the, the outline of today's sermon is in the center of your bulletin. I encourage you to, to turn there as well and, and f- fill that in as we go. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects to preach on, and that is heaven. And, and due to the, uh, the breadth of the subject, I mean, you could do a whole series, and really the series could go on for quite a while, about heaven. There's so much to be said. So uh, a lot will be left unsaid about heaven today. I want to tell you that in advance. But I do want to focus on one aspect that I think is particularly tied to today's passage in, in our study of John. And I hope to share enough that the Holy Spirit can take it and, and stir it up in your heart and give you kind of a holy homesick feeling today that I've had all week in, in putting this message together. And I hope it will bless your heart this morning. Before we get too serious, though, I, I read about uh, a follow, following a campaign speech, a young man rushed up one time to Senator Everett Dirksen. And he said, Senator, I wouldn't vote for you if you were St. Peter. Dirks and I, the young man, for a moment, he said, Son, if I were St. Peter, you couldn't vote for me because you wouldn't be in my district. <laughs> uh, that was a nice way of saying something not very nice, wasn't it? Well, today, as we share about this, it's my hope and my prayer for you that all of you will leave today being in heaven's district and being confident that heaven is indeed your home. Uh, let's start with, with verse 1 there where he says in John 14, 1, Do not let your heart be troubled. You know, there are a lot of things in this world today that cause us to be troubled. They cause us stress and they just stress us out. Now, how many admit, admit this morning that you are a high stress person? My wife, honey, just slip your hand on up there. Yes. Um, high stress people today. We worry about things, we stress out over things. And maybe some of you have loved ones who are lost and, and you worry about their salvation. Maybe some of you have wayward children that uh, make you pull your hair out worrying over them and they drive you crazy sometimes with the things that they do and the choices they make. Maybe some of you have a stressful job and every morning when the alarm clock goes off you think, I've got to, to go to that job and face all that stress again today. Some people watch the evening news and they get all worked up over the things that we see there and they stress and wring their hands over that, whether it's terrorism or the economy or the downward trends in our society today, and we stress over it. But sometimes it's just little everyday things that stress us out. And it might not make sense unless you were there to know why it stressed you. It makes me think of this story I read about a lady who was in an airport And she was getting ready to board her plane, and she stopped by one of those little things, and she bought her a a Kit Kat candy bar. Y'all know what I'm talking about, a Kit Kat? You ever had just a little bite of heaven right there it is? And and a Kit Kat candy bar, and she had it with her stuff and all her stuff going through the airport, and she was looking in the area where you're waiting to board, the boarding area, uh, waiting to board the planes, and it was full. I mean, the flight was sold out. And, and she looked, and there was one seat down on the end of the row. So she went down there and took her stuff, and she set it in the seat to kind of hold her seat. And then she was getting some other things ready. And she, she turned around, and she was going to sit down in her seat and eat her candy bar while she waited on the plane. But as she turned around, the guy in the seat next to her had peeled open her candy bar and was sitting there pinching off pieces of it and eating it. And she thinks... The gall of that man. And she couldn't believe it. And the more she thought about it, he stole my candy bar. The angrier she got. And so they kind of had this stare down. She looked at him, and he looked at her while he's eating that candy bar, just one bite after another. So she said, I just reached over, and I took me a pinch off of it, and I ate it. And we just kept looking at each other. And this went back and forth the whole time till the candy bar's gone. This, this showdown going on. So finally, there was this awkward silence, and the man gets up, goes and buys him another Kit Kat candy bar, peels it, and sits down and starts eating it there. And so she reaches over, takes a bite off that one, and just starts eating it. And on it goes till that one's gone. Well, before long, the the voice comes over the intercom and says that the plane's ready for boarding. So she reaches in her purse to get her boarding pass, and she looks in her purse, and there's her Kit Kat candy bar. And she realizes this is now awkward. <laughs> she has eaten his, two of his candy bars now. 
Um, that caused her a lot of stress. Sometimes we have those goofy moments like that, don't we, that, that stress us out and you don't know how to handle it and, and nobody would explain it unless you were there. But when you find your heart growing trouble, it's important that as Christians we know to refocus on what we believe. To refocus on what we believe. John goes on and in verse 1, it says, Jesus says, Believe in God, believe also in me. Throughout the Bible, both the Old and the New Testaments, we find God giving promises to his people. He promised the children of Israel a land of milk and honey. And, and throughout the Bible, it unfolds. Many years went by, and there were some ups and downs, but God fulfilled his promise to take them to the land of milk and honey. And he promised a Messiah. And over centuries, this plan unfolded, and there were some ups and downs. But God delivered on his promise to send a Messiah in the birth of his son, Jesus, and our Savior. In his word, God has given us promises that are still good for us today. In 2 Peter 1, 4, it says, For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Listen, we have promises today that through troubled times and through all the stressful situations that we can hang on to if we focus on them through the, the troubled times. It helps us to refocus our mind from the worries and the stresses and to focus us on the power and the provision of the promise giver. You know, when your heart grows troubled, it's important to steady your mind on the promises of God. And there will be some ups and downs along the way, and you might be tempted to think, I don't know if he's going to keep this promise. Let me tell you, he's never broken one, and he's not going to start with you. Are you worried about your ability to provide for yourself and your family? Maybe there's been a change in your family income or your job situation, and you just don't know how it's going to work out. Well, Philippians 4.19 tells us God has promised to meet all of our needs. It's a promise of God. And, I, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus says feel like you're about to fall apart and have an emotional breakdown and you just don't know how you're going to deal with life itself, God has promised to give his peace to our hearts at the moments when we need it most. Yes, you can get up and do tomorrow. He's promised it. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which transcends all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's a beautiful promise. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Do you feel as though your life lacks purpose and, and fulfillment and you're just spinning your wheels? Jesus promised to give us purpose and to bestow blessings that make this life worth living. John 10.10, 10, he says, I've come that they may have life and have it abundantly. That's a promise of God. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Does it feel as though you just don't see God's hand at work in your life and you think everybody else seems to have a plan for their life and, and I just, I don't see how in this situation I'm in, I just feel abandoned, God. I don't see your hand at work and, and I don't see what's going on. I'm in a trial here and I have been for some time and there's no end in sight. Sometimes God is at work. and Don't make the mistake of thinking he's only at work in your life when you feel blessed. Sometimes he is doing his greatest work through your valleys through the times of tribulation, and that's going to be an amazing part of your testimony, the crowning moment of your life. And God, you'll look back and you'll say, God, you were at work in my life, and what a precious time that was when you walked through the valley with me. God is at work in ways we don't always understand. Romans 8, 28 gives us that promise, and we know that God causes all things, the good and the bad, to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Your hurt does not have to be a wasted hurt today. He can use all things. Today I want to remind you of something you already know. But that we have a place where we belong. We sang that song this morning, Where I Belong. And I want us to think about that concept today. There is a place for you. There are times in, 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 as I get older and I learn more about this world and I just see the trend that we're on, there's times when I just think, God, I just don't, I don't feel like I belong here anymore. 
God, I, I, I just feel out of place sometimes. Listen to verse 2. He says, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it weren't so, I would have told you. You know, the Bible uses a lot of different words to describe heaven. In one place in the Bible, it's called a country, and it kind of describes the vastness of heaven. In another place, it's called a, a city, indicating a large number of inhabitants living in, in close proximity. In another place, it's called a kingdom, meaning that there's a, a governmental structure there to it all. It's an organized place. It's called paradise, which indicates it's a place of great beauty and unthinkable glory. It's just going to be breathtaking when we get there. But here it's referred to as my father's house. It's our home. It's our home. And that's what I want to focus on today about heaven. Home is a place where you can be yourself. Home is a place where you can take off your, your necktie and you can kick off your shoes and, and relax. And it's a place where you are accepted and a place where you are loved. You're not just a guest. You belong there. Your stuff is there. You live there. We can't wait to get home. Now, the King James translation of this verse says there, there are many mansions. Now, we like that word, but mansion's not necessarily the best translation of the Greek word that Jesus used. From this, we've developed this idea that we're all going to get up there and it's going to be like an episode on HGTV where we tour our big mansion. And maybe it will be that way. I don't know. But don't get running away with that idea of mansion. He says, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. Many rooms. And so perhaps we, we will have a mansion, possibly. But a more accurate translation is rooms or dwelling places. Now you see, the word that Jesus used here is in keeping with Jewish marriage customs of his day. Now go with me on this, okay? The, the customs that the Jews followed in Jesus' day when there was a marriage taking place perfectly parallels our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now follow me on this. The, the wedding traditions, Christ is often referred to in Scripture as the bridegroom, is he not? And the church, the redeemed, are referred to as the bride. And I think he's teaching us something by this. There are 12 steps involved in a, a Jewish marriage process. And I'm not going to go into detail on these, but I do want to just go through them real quick and give you an overview so that you see in proper context Jesus' words today in John 14 and understand, okay? Step one was the selection of the bride. The fact that you have heard the gospel is not by chance. You have been selected and chosen. God issued a call to you because if you will accept his call, he wants you to be his child, his bride, if you will. Step two, the price of the bride. The, the groom would pay the father of the bride a certain amount of money. We might call it a dowry today um, for the right to marry the daughter. And so Jesus has come to this earth and paid a price for us. He paid a, a tremendous price on Calvary's cross to purchase us from the wages of sin. Step three, betrothal, and we might call that today engagement. The groom makes a commitment to the bride. And Jesus has called all of us and invited us to be his bride, his child. Step four, the bride's consent. Now, we're going to talk more about that at the end today, but the bride has the choice to accept or reject the groom's proposal offer. Step five, the cup of the covenant. They would share a special drink together that had symbolic meaning, and Jesus, likewise, has called us to his table to share in the cup of the covenant of his blood, and he parallels that through the Lord's Supper today. Step six, there were gifts given to the bride, and Jesus has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Step seven was what was called the mikvah, which Jewish brides were immersed in water for ceremonial cleansing and in preparation for this wedding. And today Jesus calls us to baptism, to be ceremonially washed and purified so that we are made ready for our bridegroom. Step eight, the departure of the groom. And I think that's where we are in the context of today's passage. Jesus says, I'm getting ready to depart. He's preparing the disciples in the text today. Step nine, the consecrated bride. The bride, and this is where we are today, church. The bride, now that the groom has departed, we are set apart. We are now lo no longer dating around with the world, so to speak. But we are reserved for our one true bridegroom. We want to be recognizable that when he comes for us, we are set apart and holy and pure and undefiled by this world. 
We're reserved for the one that we love. Step 10, the return of the groom. More about that later. Step 11, the groom would take the bride to the father's house. And in step 12, there was a great marriage supper. And we, we read in prophecy about the marriage supper of the Lamb that will take place in heaven after the return of Christ. You know, Jesus has gone to prepare a wonderful place for us. In verse 2, he says, For I go and I prepare a place for you. Now, after the engagement had been sealed and the bride had accepted, the groom then would go back to his father's house and they would begin making preparations. And what the father would do is he would add on to his house and build living quarters for his son's family who would come and live in his house. Now, some of you parents that don't want your children to leave, you like that idea, don't you? They'll, they'll just come and, and live here with us. And some of you are like, no, my children ain't living with me forever. They're getting on out of here. So maybe some of you don't like the sounds of that. But that was the custom of the day. And the bride, they didn't have, you know, cell phones and all the technology we have today to stay in touch. So she wasn't exactly sure what the progress was on the house or when he would be back. She just knew that when the, the housing arrangements are completed and everything's in order and ready, he will come back for me. Meanwhile, the bride would remain with her parents, faithfully waiting for her groom to return for her when the preparations were complete. She didn't know exactly when he would return. She just knew that she needed to be ready. Now, she might know it ought to be getting close by now. I'd better be readying myself. Jesus was teaching the disciples that he, the groom, was about to return to his father's house in heaven and make rooms for us. There are many rooms there for us so that we can dwell with him. Jesus is coming back to take us to be where he is. In verse 3, he says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, Jewish bridegrooms usually came for their brides late at night. That was kind of the custom of, the, of that time. Near the midnight hour, we sing a lot of songs about the return of Christ, the midnight hour when Jesus comes again. The sound, listen, of the shofar would break the silence of the night and would awaken the bride. He would holler from outside the house. He would awaken her with a shout from the streets. Now listen, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out the parallels here. Listen to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a what? With a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now, we don't know for sure when this time is going to come. If anybody tells you, I figured it out, I know the day and the hour that he's returning, you just can write them off because they don't know what they're talking about. Jesus says no one knows. But I believe we can know when it's near. Amen? Jesus has given us enough uh, information in the Word and through prophecy that if you pay attention to prophecy and pay attention to world events, we can see that so much of it is coming together in our time. And I believe that we may be getting close to the end of the preparations in heaven. I mean, if we put this in our terms today, they may be picking out paint colors and furniture. I, I think it's getting that, that close. And someday soon, I want to tell you, church, soon God the Father is going to look over to King Jesus and he's going to say, everything's ready, son. Go get your bride. What a day it's going to be when our bridegroom comes for us. You know, somewhere along the way, our concept of, of home, it changes. For the first part of a bride's life, all she ever knew as home was the home that she had with her parents. And once she became engaged, though, something starts changing in her heart. And she begins dreaming and, and yearning for her new home that she's going to establish with her husband and the family that she would have. In the book of Genesis, it talks about a man will leave his mother and father and will cleave unto his wife. And there has to be a, a healthy separation. And we're establishing our home now. And our concept of home changes now. You know, she lived with anticipation. The bride did for so long that when the groom finally arrived for her, the groom didn't have to, to tear her out of her parents' arms and say, come with me. But if you watch a wedding, the bride, she marches with much anticipation down the aisle and their eyes meet and they willingly come together and are united in marriage. I don't know about you, 
But the longer I live in this world, I don't mean to hate on life. That's not what I'm saying. But the longer I live in this world, the less this world feels like home. The less I, I feel like I belong here sometimes. I catch myself dreaming more and more about what it's going to be like when I finally get to my real home. A place where the worries and the concerns of this day and the, the, the constant threats and fears that we have here today, they're not there anymore. I catch myself daydreaming about my real home because so much of me is already there. My name is written there. My citizenship is already there. My inheritance is there. More and more people that I love are there. My God and my Savior are there. And they're waiting for me. So I don't hate this life. Don't misunderstand me today. I'm called to live an abundant life and enjoy every day that I'm blessed with here. But I can't help but think about my real home sometimes. And I get homesick. When that day comes and we hear the great trumpet sound... And we, we hear a great shout that comes out from the redeemed and the, the host of heaven and everyone's present in this earth is filled with the glory of God. I'll just tell you this, you're not going to have to pry my fingers off this world. I just imagine I'm going to stand there and say, it's about time you showed up. Let's go home. Let's go home. I just imagine I'll, I'll reach for the one who chose me, the one who purchased me, the one who cleansed me and has prepared a place for me. I want to go home. So much of me is already there. There's a beautiful song. We've sung this before. I've been thinking about it all week because this sermon just echoes the words of it. And I want us to sing it together today. And maybe this will help give you an added meaning and insight into this song today. But think about the words as we sing this together. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken, and time won't matter any. Beulah land, I'm longing for you, and someday on thee I'll stand, and there my home shall be eternal. You land, sweet Beulah land. Just indulge me one more verse. Listen. I'm looking out across the river to where my face shall end in sight. There's just a few more days to labor, and then I'm going to take my heavenly flight to Beulah land I'm longing for you, and someday on the I'll stand, and there my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. And all the redeemed said, Amen. Amen. I've been homesick all week. Maybe you've just gotten a taste of it. And listen, I, I don't want us to hate on this world, this life. There's important things to be done for the kingdom. There's blessings to be enjoyed here today. But listen, when we hear that trumpet sound, don't, don't dig your fingernails in here. Because we haven't started living until we get to Beulah land. I want to just wrap up real quick today by telling you and making sure that I don't take for granted that everybody understands the way home. 
It's one thing to sing about it, but I want to make sure that everybody understands what he says in verses 4 through 6. Jesus said, and you know the way where I'm going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. It's been said that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And I want everybody today to understand this. Heaven is not our default destination. Our culture tells us that it is. If you watch movies, the biggest scoundrels that you see um, in these movies, they'll die and then they go to their, their funeral service and they'll say, oh, we know they're in heaven now. And I'm like, well, they just killed eight people and were part of the mafia in the scene before. I don't know if that's necessarily where they are or where they stand with Jesus, but heaven is not our default destination. Unless our sin problem is resolved, the only place that we'll go is to our true default destination, which frankly is hell. For the Christian, this present life is the closest we'll ever get to hell. Think about that. But for the lost, this present life is as close as they'll ever get to heaven. Think about that. Perhaps someone here today has never accepted the proposal from our bridegroom, Jesus. You've never given him a yes or no. And listen, there will be a day when to fail to give him a, a decision, that is your decision. Because there will be a day of finality. Now, I don't want to leave here today without breaking it down real basic-like and making sure everybody understands how we accept his proposal offer. If you want to make heaven your home, he asks that you profess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. The fact that he died on the cross only has meaning for you if you profess the name of Jesus and admit that you can't be good enough to get to heaven on your own, that you need the blood that he shed to be the blood to atone for you. And we invite him to be the Lord of our life. Second of all, he asks that we repent of our sins. It, it means that we turn from following the things of this world and we strive to obey him. We come into agreement with God. It doesn't mean that I have to be sinless and perfect the rest of my life or I would be disqualified myself. But it means that my life is now in agreement with God. Instead of chasing the things of the world, I'm now pursuing the things of God. Do I slip up from time to time? I do. But it grieves me like it grieves God and I immediately turn to Him again in repentance, asking His forgiveness. If that's not the attitude of your heart, I beg of you today, will you turn to Him with a repentant heart? Profess Him as the Lord of your life. Thirdly, he asks that we be washed, that we be baptized and be washed clean. Maybe you've never done these things today. You can leave today knowing that your citizenship is in heaven. And whatever tomorrow brings, it's going to be okay because nothing can touch the inheritance that you have. If you're here today, don't let anything stand in the way of making that choice because quite frankly, this moment, this day is all that we're guaranteed. Don't tarry another day. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, will you receive him as we stand together and sing this song of invitation? Out of my Monday sorrow and night, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. To thy freedom, gladness, and light, Jesus, I come to thee, and out of earth's sorrows into thy bone, and out of life's storms and Out of distress to jubilant song, Jesus, I come to Thee. And out of the fear and dread of the tomb, Jesus, I come, O oh, Jesus. Jesus, I come into the joy and light of thy home. Jesus, I come to thee. 
Out of the depths of ruin untold And into the peace of thy sheltering fold Ever thy glorious face to behold Jesus I come to Please be seated just a moment. Noah, come on up here. This is Noah Irvin. He comes today. He wants to uh, accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and make his reservations at his heavenly home. And why don't you show him what you think of that choice and decision today? <clears throat> Noah, I'm going to ask if you will to just take my hand and repeat after me the good confession of faith in Jesus Christ. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, Son of God, and I accept Him, and I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. And we again rejoice with that decision, and we're going to let Jacob and, and Noah be preparing for that. And I know we're in a little bit of overtime today, but I'll give the Holy Spirit a little overtime. We've been through overtime with our favorite team recently, haven't we? So we'll, we'll give the Holy Spirit. If you do have somewhere you need to go, you can uh, feel free to, to be dismissed today. But while they're preparing for that, I just want to make you aware that tonight the youth will gather at 630 uh, for their youth activities from 630 to 8. Uh, we'll have adult Bible study in here tonight uh, at 7 o'clock. Our children are taking a little break until February, the first Sunday in February. They're going to start back with with children's choir and all that. Also, uh, we have, our church family, we have graduated a few here lately with Hassel Huffman uh, going to be with the Lord and also Barbara Salee. So we just want to remember those families. Um, you know, on this side there's mourning, but I say we graduated. They, they're in that home where we talked about today and where we all uh, want to be as well. Um, anything else that we need to... This is officially stalling for time, so yes. You've got a song. That works perfectly. Great. Let's do that. Set the captives free. 
And like Greg mentioned before, I had two great talks with Noah um, this past Wednesday and the Wednesday before that. And I mean, he is on fire for the Lord, and, and it's my pleasure to baptize him. I mean, he's on fire, got me on fire, gets everybody else on fire, and so this is a great day in the Lord's. But uh, Noah, I come to baptize you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, buried in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. <laughs> Amen. I'll end a service that way anytime. You agree? If you would, stand with me. Let's be dismissed. I'm going to ask if uh, I think the couples that weren't here at the beginning, are y'all here now? The one, parents with the babies? Come on down and we'll include you. We don't want to miss this opportunity to include you in our closing prayer today. <laughs> hey. You coming too. All right. Good deal. Let's let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we come today just uh, thanking you as we started this service, thanking you for life itself, thanking you, Lord, for making these beautiful children, these gifts in the image of God. Father, I pray that you will bless the parents, Father, to bring these children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, to teach them the ways of the Lord so that they too can be called not only earthly children but children of the Most High God. Father, we ask for your blessing upon their future, and may their souls be resting securely in Jesus Christ. We ask uh, your blessing on us now as we leave this place, and although the service is closing, Lord, our devotion to you does not. May your Holy Spirit go with us in all the places this week finds us, and may we shine as a light for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.